guys. Well, I was trying to get footage of us pressing it on, but I took the uh, brand new bearing. We pressed it on there with the shims. Looking pretty good. Um, I am kind of stuck on the charger here because my phone was acting up. Um, apparently, I was saying I didn't have enough juice, but anyways. Um, I made sure to clean up the surfaces really good. Used some bright clean, wiped everything down, even up here. Like, I don't want any debris, nothing on this for the final assembly. I know I still got a bunch of shit all over there. I'm going to clean that off, too. I don't want any of that in the diff for the final assembly. But I cleaned the whole shaft here and the inside of the bearing off, and then I took uh, gear oil and I lubed up the inner race of the bearing and I lubed up the shaft. Now, I would, if you're doing this and you're using a press like that, which you should be to do this, um, definitely putting gear oil on there definitely uh, helped with the uh, violent made it slide a lot easier on there and it wasn't as sketchy if you go in there dry it's gonna pop and <laughs> take a lot more force so I would definitely recommend lubing it up just to slide it on there it's not like I put a heavy bunch on there but definitely helps so dad's over at the garage right now his garage grabbing uh, the big three-quarter inch uh, bar but uh so I was kind of jank ass filming here because I'm stuck on the charger. But uh, got these bolts that we're going to use with that tool there to hold the uh, pinion flange still. Uh, he's going to hold on to that while I tighten it. Where I got to crush the crush sleeve, and get the pinion flange on. I got to put black RTV inside these teeth here uh, to make sure it's all sealed up. But yeah. Going in for the final assembly now, it's pretty exciting, but uh, we're going to get to it. Alright guys, I uh, just went through cleaning out everything, it has been sitting for a few months, so I'm going to make sure there's nothing in there that could hurt anything, and I cleaned off the races, uh, went ahead and put more lube on there, my finger, it's a little milky looking, now I need, we got the pinion ready to go, cleaned up, lubed up. Get the new crush sleeve on there. It's about ready to go in. Um, now I'm gonna, I already cleaned this off with brake clean, but we're gonna relude this guy too for the installer. Try to spin it around a little bit. This guy's gotta go in first. Like that. And we got the oil slinger. Probably go ahead and lube this up too. I already re went back and cleaned all these off. Just kind of make sure everything is nice and lubed, nice and clean. No any surprises. That goes on top of there like that. Now we gotta get the seal in. Which where is it? Is it? Oh, yeah. Got the seal here. Um, what we'll probably do, you can see that it has this like factory shit on here, but we're gonna go ahead and take some RTV and put another ring around there just to make sure this is nice and sealed. You don't want any leaks. So once we get that on there, we'll put that right there. Tap it in. I got the race driver set up to pull out. We're gonna get a nice flat hammering surface on there. Once we have that in, and then we can slide the pinion up underneath there. Get the pinion flange on. I, I'm gonna use this to lube the inside of the teeth here. Go all the way around. So whenever it seals up on the pinion, we're not gonna have any oil leaks there either. And then it'll be time to torque the nut, and hopefully we don't go over and have to. Fucking take it back to and redo it all. So, all right, we didn't get it on camera. We we were trying not. Uh, we were going to use this originally, and then I was worried about the rubber because it's up higher than the rest. So I didn't want to like fuck up the rubber because, as you can see, that's more sitting on there. So we tried just tapping around to get it down. That was not working. You really need race driver set. 
But we ended up just saying, fuck it, put this on there. Yeah, the rubber got pushed down when we did that, but it kind of, it's brand new rubber. It's fine. It pushed it down and this made full contact with the metal here and then it went right in. So, and then of course I got RTV shooting out everywhere when I did that to be expected, but we got that in, get the oil slinger and the bearing down in there. Only one thing left to do. All ready to go. Crush sleeve on there, cleaned off. This is lubed, races are lubed. That's on there, got RTV down inside the splines there. So we're ready to go. And I just knocked it in. There's the hole. There we go. I also put lube at the bottom of the washer according to Ford's instructions. The washer part of the nut, it's not an actual washer. And as you can see, I got a lot of play. I'll let this. Just easy for a second. Oh, all right. Now, I'm gonna use the impact, but I'm gonna be very careful. I'm just doing this, this part, until I get the slack out of it. And then once the slack's out of it, no more impact. So, because there's a lot of room to take up here. It just makes things a lot quicker. It's not moving very much. I was watching the socket and it's barely spinning, so it's getting nice and warm. Maybe we'll uh, try to think the best setup with two guys here. Might just leave it like this. Prop it a little bit like that. Because I don't, I honestly don't want it to be on its side because we still have play. So I want to be easy on my bearings. I don't want to fuck the cages up over. Because if you think if we're pushing down and there's play, it's gonna see how it moves. Don't want to do that. So I want to do it straight up and down, let gravity do its thing while we tighten these. I got uh, this hardware from Lowe's um, for this. These bolts fit down in there. So, um, down in here, oh, there's that pinion first. So, about something like that. Well, kind of hard to do one handed. Trying to prop this up for a second. That'll work. Redneck ingenuity at its finest. Just wanted to set that on there because I'm going to have to tighten these down. I don't want the weight, this tool weighs a decent amount. I don't want it pulling on my pinion and on my bearings whenever it's not fully seated. I really expected the damn impact to get it further than that to at least snug, but 
This guy's a little old. He's been through some hell. Been through some shit. I'm just holding, right? Yep, try to hold her straight and steady. All right, guys, here we go. It's getting nerve again, so I'm... Fuck. Okay. Don't hit that carrier. <laughs> I feel like I need to get snug before we start. Because you see how much it's going to take. Like, we're probably going to have to put this on the floor, have our feet holding the tubes down one guy probably using the cheater bar the other one tries to like hold this part down or something it's going to take some force that picture on the forward was like one guy was just like yeah I know that's why I was, I was laughing at that I'm like it's fucking bullshit <laughs> it doesn't even look like it's moving I feel like we need a bigger we need a kind of impact is he's got the Earthquake XT one. Oh, from Harbor Freight? Yeah, it's got a lot more juice in there. <clears throat> well, guys, we're going to have to call in some cavalry here, maybe some help from a neighbor guy down the road, get a better impact, and try to get this slack out of there. Because once that slack's out, then I'll feel more comfortable doing this, but we might have to move to the floor too. Because it's kind of awkward doing this with two guys. Like, I, I was pulling, I felt like I was pulling him that way, and then the diff is wanting to move. It's kind of a bitch. So we're gonna have to figure out a better setup here. I talked to my neighbor, the one that helped me with the training jack before. He's got this Earthquake XT from Harbor Freight. It's a bad motherfucker. He also gave us this better socket here for this. Let me make sure it's gonna fit on there first. Yeah, all right. But uh, this thing's a bad motherfucker, so I'm gonna take her easy. I try to hold it as straight as possible. I don't want it going in crooked. All right, here we go. Man. I mean, not much. What the fuck? Shouldn't be this hard. Here. I don't press down on it. Moved. It's not moving very fast or much. Son of a bitch, guys. There's, that's not 1,600 foot pounds, I'll tell you that. It'll fucking it'll be coming out of my hand. It's moving. It's getting tighter. Can you see the socket moving? Yeah, I'm, I'm watching the socket every time I do it. Like I was watching this hole, it was going. I'm gonna mess up the nut. This is a really tough nut. I'm not gonna fuck up that nut. I'm just kind of just like, I'm not up or down. If anything, I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure it's pressed up. The slack's getting tighter. 
Jesus, man, I just got to really go ape shit on it. Plays going. Sure. Yeah. There's no play. I mean, we can take this tool off and double check. Here, let's go ahead and pull that off. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. We're going to check the preload real fast. I mean, it's it feels like it has a little drag on it already. Um, this is the first time I've had everything that's supposed to go in there in there. Like the seal. And all that. And I need my other. Where's that one socket? That one right there. Oh, yeah. Preload zero. Breakaway torque is at zero. So we're good. It's where I wanted to be before starting to torque this down. I've. They say not to use an impact on this part, but this thing's already getting really fucking hard to tighten. I know it's going to be a bitch if we try to do it manually. What I noticed when we were torquing it with this is that this thing was just barely moving. And I know whenever that preload starts coming on, it's going to come on quick, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to, I'm going to roll the dice, take my chances here, because I think it's going to be easier. I just got to be careful. So, the preload is 16 to 28 inch pounds. So we're at zero right now, no slack. So it's gonna be, it's gonna come on quick. So what I'm gonna do is do quick little braps, and then I'm gonna feel it. Now, hope I don't twist my damn hand off. drag yet. I see it move just like a little bit and then I check. Maybe at like half or one. So preload's probably starting to come on at this point. Or maybe not. Now it's definitely a one. One and a half. It, it, baby steps. I know it seems like I'm being over cautious here, but I really don't go <laughs> too far. Watching it very closely. Yeah, we're getting something now. Right about a two. Hey, I'm fine with as long as we, <laughs> we're only going up a half inch pound each time. I'm fine with that. As long as it's not going zero to one hundred on me. Just hey, keep being careful. Feels even tighter. We're getting there. Baby steps. Getting about six. See, this is going slow, so that's good. It's good. So I want it to go slow. Yep. Start to feel even more. by the breakaway so you go until it starts breaking loose it's about 19 so I stopped right, right there I think we're about 20 I might uh, call her good there because yeah. that, that, that jump from 
5 to 20 <laughs> real fucking quick. I, that's, I knew that was going to happen. When the preload starts coming on, it comes on real quick. That's why they say not to do what I did. But I think we got her, dudes. Good thing I fucking stopped when I did. Cause I, I, I try not, I, sometimes I fuck myself in the past getting a little impatient. Can't do that when doing this. I'm like double, triple checking here. Yeah, it's, well, hell, now it's looking like it's breaking away at 20. I, I wanted to turn around and stuff and maybe make sure this is all like settled in after tightening it. Yeah, it's about 20 consistently. Let's go the other way just to double check. I go the other way, it doesn't. Going the other way, it's more like 14. Something tells me I kind of want to inch it just a little bit more, but I don't know if I want to do it with this. What do you think? I feel like I just, because I feel like I'm at the bottom of the spec range. I feel like I just need to give it that one more nudge just to be on the yeah. same side. Cause going the other way guys it's about like 15 16 it's like real close going the other way and it's been around a few times like make sure it's all like seated and good in there if you're gonna hit it one more time i'll just do it real quick probably will yeah i think we just need to tap it just just a hair <laughs> we're gonna do it if i all right, just a little baby tap. I don't even know if that moved. I didn't think it moved. I know it doesn't look like it on camera, but I'm actually sweating bullets right now. All right, just tap it in. The hair over Tony that way. I think we're gonna, fuck it, it's good. It's good, guys. I think it's good. See, at first it, it was just going the one direction that uh, it just it felt like it was at the bottom of the spec range, and that's not where I want to be. I don't want to be close to the bottom, and I don't want to be close to the top. I think about 20, 21. It's like 20 to 22 is about where it's at. I mean, that's not the most accurate fucking tool in the world there, so there's some play in it. That's why I'm using shitty tools. You need to measure a hundred fucking times until you get some repeating, repeating results. Let's try going on this side now. 20. It's like 22. Don't right. try this at home, kids. Alright, guys. Got the fucking pinion in there. <clears throat> About 22 inch pounds preload. Very nice. Got this, uh, before we did anything, we ended up getting this uh, fill plug out. Um, I got to clean up the threads and stuff on that. But uh, I wanted to make sure I could get that fucking thing out. It looked like it was going to be a bastard, but it actually wasn't that bad. So came right out because I'm going to have to fill us with fluid before this is all done. And since I shortened the housing and stuff, um, it's going to take a different amount than what they suggest stock. So I'm going to have to fill in here. And go by feel because you want it to be right below that you don't want too much fluid in there but you gotta make sure you have enough obviously but anyways i digress um now i'm gonna start measuring shims uh try to get the right because i'm gonna i need to add uh i almost i almost kind of want to try it with that and see what the gear teeth pattern looks like just to make sure nothing has changed now that everything's in there but uh you know what well i don't know <clears throat> i'm gonna play with the shims i just kind of because you know now that we have everything officially installed part of me wonders if anything changed from my setup that i had where it was right but i think 
we're going to go ahead and just roll the dice. Um, I'm going to measure these shin packs. I might have to make a new one, which kind of worries me because I like using the solid ones, but I need to add 5 thousandths to each side, and the smallest shim is 10 thousandths, so that's not going to work. And I know, <clears throat> I know 10 thousandths on each side probably wouldn't work. All right, guys, so I did this off camera. Winter, winter, chicken dinner. That was my official one. What I did was, <clears throat> forget the pinion depth here, ring gear pinion side. That's my shim pack since it's a shim thickness. Um, so I added these two numbers together, 273 and 260. Got 533. That's the overall thickness of my shims that I have. And then what I also did was I took this one and the other big thick stock one wherever it's at. Anyways, I measured <clears throat> these two and those two equaled 542. And the difference between those is 9,000. So with the stock ones in there, I know that it was uh, kind of hard to get it out with the pry bar, which it should, it shouldn't come out easy. So I have about 9,000, nine to 10,000 difference from what it was stock. Now, I could just fill up the gap. I think that's what we're going to do. Add five thousandths to each side, which would be ten thousandths. Or we're going to try to get around that. It's going to be hard playing with these shim packs. Now I'm about to build another one for this side. Um, but we're going to do that and try to get and try to fill up this uh, uh, space that we created by messing with these shims, because we want the right amount of squeeze on these bearings just like the pinion its bearings has a preload so do these um, basically if they're not if there's not enough preload on these they can wear the bearing out uh, by wobbling around just general play if there's too much then you can squeeze them too hard so you think your shims sit here and it's going to squeeze them too hard and it's going to generate a lot of extra heat and it's going to burn up the bearings really fast. So I don't want to put too much, but I don't want to have not enough either because that's not going to be good either. So the only, the only thing is I'm not using the stock carrier housing. So this housing could very well be a few thousandths taller or shorter than the stock one that it was pulled out with the stock shims. So this may create more distance to make up with shims, or it may decrease, or it may be the same. All right, so I added two to the pinion side. I didn't change the other one, so I just added two to this side, which should have added more backlash, which I think it did, but it's still not enough because, see here, it's hard to tell, but that's, well, let me walk it a little bit. So that's like 96 to 4. So that's 8. I'm getting about an 8, which that's really at the bottom of the spec. And I would like, it was, uh, I did ha have to use, I used this little wood block very carefully to tap them in. <clears throat> but it was definitely tighter. But I feel like it could go a little tighter and I feel like we could add little bit more backlash to be on the safe side like I want to be around a 9 or a 10 it's 8 to 13 is a spec and I did want to run a little tighter so I think what we're gonna do since we need more squeeze plus we need more backlash we're gonna add and we're going in the right direction we just didn't go enough I think I'm gonna bump this up try bumping this up to like 268 add another 2 to it uh, most of these shims are either 10, 12, 12 and a half, and like 15 and a half slash 16. So basically, I, I find if I find a 10, then I bump it up to a 12. I replace that one when, uh, with a 12, 12 and a half, whatever the fuck it is. If I find like a 15 and a half, 
or well, yeah, if I find a 10, I bump it up to that. And then if I find a 12 and a half, you know, say I don't have any 10s, but if I have a 12 and a half, then I'll find a 15 and a half and I will put that one in there and swap those out. So that's how I'm getting my uh, 2000s thickness change here. Okay, guys, so I marked these seven, eight backlash. So not enough squeeze on either one of those. So uh, kept the ring gear the same. <clears throat> Pinion side added another another two. Um, I think I took out a 16, replaced it with a 20 thousandths, and then I took a 12 and replaced it with a 10 to give me the two increase that I need. So now I got 276, 268, which is an overall thickness of 530, 40, 44. So even more squeeze, which is interesting. Um, seeming how 542 was too much and it still popped up, well it was a bitch to get out and but the stock ones were where I got stuck and this one was so your 542 right there that was the exact same and it slid right out so now we're putting even just a hair more squeeze on it and see what happens that's, that's, that's crazy that it's the same, these were the same thickness. This one popped out, no problem. Stock ones, hell no. I don't know. I digress, but we're going to try this. I already got it measured out, ready to go. Let's get it back in there. All right, guys, so here is this right here. I'm getting about an eight, a solid eight. I've tried multiple spots, and it's clear as day. This is with the pinion side at 268 <clears throat> after the second time of increasing it by two. So let's see here. 64. Well, now it's making me look like an asshole. <laughs> That's showing about like seven there. It may have settled a little bit. Yeah, see it's moving. All right, 69, all right, 69. That's showing about seven there, actually. It's making me look like an asshole. It was showing eight, I swear to God. Let's see, now it's showing, okay, there's 69, 61. Still showing about eight. So, the, t the, the fitness, as far as how, uh, tight to squeeze there was that that felt good but uh so i think i got to squeeze about where i need it <laughs> which is like two thousandths more than what it was stock but now i need i want to bump this up so i'm probably going to have to drop ring gear side probably let's see here My kids are down. Um, so to change it one it says thickness of two so two or three would probably make me feel better two or three so I need to drop this down to a solid like 273 274 and then probably bump this one up to 270 which is going to be kind of funny because these numbers are starting to equal out almost like Perfect uh, thickness or same thickness on both sides. Well, that would be funny, you know. After going through all this trouble, and then it turns out being the same number on each side. So <clears throat> bump this up to 270 because I like the squeeze. So I want to keep the squeeze that it has. So add two here plus two, and then minus two is what I need to do. All right, let's take her back apart again. Hopefully this time uh, we get at least a nine or a 10 backlash. All right guys, I redid the shims. I got about 270 on the pinion side, 272 on the ring gear side. <laughs> it's kind of funny how almost symmetrical this is. Um, so get the shims ready to go. I'm gonna double check again, even though the shim packs are so close that it probably wouldn't even matter too much. I do wanna make sure that I don't have any 
I didn't make any boo-boos, but hopefully, hopefully this will be the last time. Well, guys, this is a first for me, but, uh, shit, I thought I cut my finger. But, uh, yeah, looks like I, uh, bent a shim. That got out of place a little bit on me. You got caught on the housing there. Whoops. I may have to pull that back out and, uh, try to flatten it out a little bit. I did not mean to do that. That's the first time that's happened to me. Fuck. Alright, so I went ahead and, uh, <laughs> Just took it home anyways, even though I kind of probably bent that shim a little bit. Um, so, looking good now. Um, so here's about 82, 92, 82, 90, 91, 81. So I'm getting about 10 now. It's got a nice clickety-clack too. So about 90, about 80, maybe. Okay, so 78, 88. Solid 10. I'm gonna double check. I'm gonna spin it around a few more times, double check, and then I uh, think it'll be time to check the gear tooth pattern. All right, guys. It's painted on. It's time to check for the last time. I think it'll be good because the last time we had about a nine backlash and the pinion depth has not changed. So now we got a 10, so it should be even closer, I think. It should look even better. So let's hope and pray, my friends. I've been working on this for like nine or 10 months ish, and it's all coming to a head tonight, finally. So let's check this shit. All right, here's the coast side. I think before that was up on the on the heel, which is surprising that it's up on the toe now. And unless I got those backwards. <laughs> and then drive side. Try to get good lighting. There we go. You can see where it left prints on the other teeth, too. I'm surprised it actually changed that much, and kind of makes me, uh, I don't like that crescent shape. But they're both matching just about on both sides, both up towards the it's still centered, but it's kind of more up on the toe than it is the heel on both sides. Because if you look... Yeah. Because before, this side was actually up on the heel. Now suddenly it's up on the toe. The uh, next step is to put the seals in. So I'm going to start working on putting the axles in. Um, I know these seals have to go in first. just looks like it's going to be a pain in the dick. I try to get that centered in there and tapped in. I'll be really careful when I do that because I only have two of these. One for each side. <clears throat> so i got the axles pulled out right there. Um, I was looking at it. It's hard to tell. But, uh, maybe I can gently put this down on the side. But from what he told me, this is a sealed bearing here. As you can see, it's got rubber on each side. And you see this little rubber part right here that seals up. I'm obviously going to clean these off uh, before I do anything. But, uh, yeah, and the seal fits right here and it looks like that's the race that holds the bearing still everything else all right guys got the uh parking brakes on officially i think this is the one that was bent um i bent it quite a bit more i don't know i may have to uh wait until i get the rotor on there or something or after it's all assembled and then get a pry bar and pry that back 
Um, I beat the shit out of it this morning, but I got parking brake assembly on. I, I found out that these uh, parking brake levers that came off of this rear diff are completely seized up and rusted. Uh, I coated them and shit. I tried hammering on them, break them free. They're, they're fucking gone. So, uh, kind of gave up on that, but I ordered new ones and I'm thinking that once I get those new ones, it won't be too hard for me to slide them in through the back here and, uh, get it on that parking brake plate there. So that shouldn't be too hard. Um, I'm really wanting to get these axles in, so I'm going to go ahead and install everything. Now that I have everything ready to go, uh, me and Dad cut these uh, spacers and everything. Like, we're completely ready to go to install the axles now. So, that's what we're going to do. So, I've been using... I got it pressed in there, and I finally... <laughs> I was using this magnetic thing and like two flat heads that I finally positioned that spacer into that groove with this pressed in like trying to come in from all angles finally got that on there and then I had to do the same thing with the retainer bracket kind of it took me forever to finally get it on the t-bolts and everything centered up and in position now I'm putting on these lock washers and the nuts this is how I've been doing this, feeding it through very carefully. Once I get it on there, then I can try to thread it by hand. And once I get started, then I can take my socket in there. And there we go. Now, hopefully everything cooperates. I'm going to tighten everything. Try to just get this all seated. I'm going to do corner to corner. I think I've shown this, but now that i got everything tightened down, I was worried about the lug hitting that fucking spring. About a one millimeter there. But like I said, this isn't fully seated either, so... I mean, the spring's on there all the way. Right down in there, and they got these lock washers on them. The only reason why I feel like it needs more is because I was looking at the lock washers here. I'll get a better view. <clears throat> but yeah, see how it almost looks like there's a small little gap there? I wonder if this is what he was talking about. I had to shim those brakes because that looks like just a little bit. Look at here about what he gave me. The only problem is it's the same size as this bearing, so I don't see how that's going to work. Um, yeah, you can kind of see where the crush washer is crushed down. Sorry, it's hard to record this. Should give you guys a good angle. But yeah, it almost looks like that lock washer could go a little bit more. I don't know. See, there's just that hair gap. I'm not sure if I'm worried about that or not. I mean, that fucking thing isn't going to go anywhere. All right, guys, I just finished the other side over here. All went well. I had a little trouble because I had to clean out the inside uh, diameter of the brake caliper bracket there. It was giving me shit, but I finally got it. Got all those bolts in and tightened down. Um, axles met up perfectly inside the carrier. I already put the plug and the snap ring down in there. 
So that's good to go. I went ahead and went back and checked my torque on all the bolts. They're good. And now I put black RTV all around. Yeah, I know I kind of put it on, laid it on there thick. Um, I had to cut the tube off because my dumbass didn't clean it out after the last time I used it. So, but yeah, about to put the lid on and seal her up and uh, ship her. Uh, today I just got my new springs in. I got my new loose springs. These are three inch drop springs. I have to figure out how the fuck I'm gonna get those out of there without the ball or uh, ball joint kit because I need a receiving end to push those out and I realized I didn't have that. I might have to go rent the tool again. Unfortunately, I may just get the one from O'Reilly's or something. I just need like the cup, you know, to put on one end so I push it out. Um, I got brand new front coil springs too and they look good so about ready to rock here. I'm getting really excited. Uh, I got to wait on uh, rotors to come in for this because I ordered the wrong ones because I'm a dumbass. So um, when those come in, I put the brakes on. But I think the next video here, after I put the lid on and seal this finally, um, the next video is going to be me installing the the leaf springs and the the rear diff and getting the shocks on and getting the brakes on and then we'll move on to this after i want the rear wheels down on the ground so before i even start fucking with this i need to have the parking brake hooked up everything because i don't <sighs> the front's gonna be fun getting those brand new springs on there um not looking forward to it i'm probably gonna have to put the engine in there to give it some more weight but we'll see um when we get there so but all right guys that's gonna do it that's the final assembly uh on the rear end finally done after i started this months ago um i, I was working on it on and off uh and right here at the end uh kept running into issues with these axles but i finally got it all together i know i skipped uh the parking brake shit but really it's not complicated um i do i did have to get new um Whatever you call it, the parking brake accutator things, um, those will be in like Monday, but that's nothing, you know, it's no big, nothing really to make a video about, but as you can see, the rear end is officially done as soon as I put this cover on and put the bolts on, and it should be ready to go, so I'm pretty, pretty fucking excited. I'm finally about done with this damn thing other than installing it on the blazer, but I'm getting pumped. Because after this gets on here, I got the lug nuts that fit the pattern. I, I just got to finish up the brakes. And, uh, yeah, I can put the wheels on and I put the parking brake cables on there. I'm going to have to get new ones of those. I haven't figured that out yet, but it should be soon. So stay tuned. Big things are coming. Um, you want to start, like, after this uh, video here, the rest of it, I'm actually going to be putting stuff on the blazer instead of it sitting here with nothing on it just dead weight so it's gonna be pretty exciting uh putting all this stuff on i'm sure i'm gonna run into a lot more little issues but we'll cross that bridge when we get there hopefully i didn't order any more wrong parts or something but all right guys uh, see you on the next one like comment subscribe helps me out I'm just starting out here so i know i'm not a professional recorder or anything or using professional equipment here but uh, I hope my videos help out you guys. Uh, I might be doing the same thing. So, all right, guys, stay tuned.